In this Tobacco University video, we'll be looking at impacts on insect development. So while there are many, we're gonna focus on a few very important key ones here related to forensics to take into consideration when we're trying to time out the development of certain insects. So keep in mind that stages follow um, a pattern within insect development. So because there's a progression of the insect life cycle that follows this predictable and known pattern, as a result, the rate of stage transition can be altered by various conditions. And knowing what that alteration may be can allow us to kind of develop an idea of exactly the time or backtrack that time to when the original uh, first kind of the time of death may have occurred, which is important when we're investigating crime scenes. So keep in mind, uh, temperature is kind of one of the major ones we want to keep track of because insects are ectothermic, meaning they're cold-blooded. Their body temperatures are largely dictated by the outside temperature. So only when the outside temperature warms an insect's internal body temperature to a critical level can the insect become active. And it's becoming active, what's allowed to do is it can eat and grow at that time. So keep in mind that temperature is something we definitely want to be making note of um, and potential previous temperature for looking at multiple days going back in time to try to determine the time of death. Now, insects to calculate the post-mortem interval. Well, insects can be used to estimate the time between death and discovery of the corpse, which is called the post-mortem interval. To increase the accuracy, temperature data, and identifying the presence of drugs in a corpse, in addition to if the corpse was wrapped in a material and the conditions it was exposed to externally should also be documented because all of these variables can be kind of factored in to try to develop the closest possible estimation to that original um, point or time of death. And we can see here definitely how the incubation temperature uh, and time and hours definitely um, can have an impact. Uh, so keeping in mind knowing the weather conditions we're talking outside, but also knowing the conditions the corpse was in and the conditions that the corpse was found and was it wrapped, for example, with some sort of external uh, wrapping can also uh, influence this intervals as well. Now, drugs can also impact the um, presence of insects. So any drugs present in the corpse at the time of death uh, can be ingested by the insects themselves and affect the rate of maggot development. A drug like cocaine speeds up the development, while some poisons such as arsenic and glycosides can also slow it down. So uh, important to know and identify what drugs may have been present. Uh, here we see uh, hands of a person being exposed to arsenic poisoning through contaminated uh, water over an extended period of time. Now, all flies, keep in mind, are not the same. Uh, so not all fly species are found everywhere. Identifying and documenting the species is important. Uh, for example, the skipper fly is only found in urban settings, and the house and blow flies are flesh flies that can be found in both urban and rural settings. So as a result, knowing not only the general species, but also getting to the scientific name can also be important because the flies aren't all the same. We said, oh, flies were present. Well, this is where an entomologist would come in and specifically identify that particular fly, which would be really important for the investigative process.